Hello everyone, my name is Carl Groover, and I've been following along with Scott Manley and Everyday Astronaut as they race to the moon and back in stock KSP 1.1.3, and I thought I would uh, put in an attempt as well. So here it is, 66,000 tons, uh, 2,500 parts, and we are launching up enjoying some time acceleration here. This did take a while, and part of this contest, I think, does come down to who has the fastest computer and the most patience. But there's a few optimizations, a lot of things you can do to make it faster, and I'm going to talk about a few of the things that I've done along the way. One of the biggest things you need if you're going straight up and you're suffering gravity losses the whole way is a high thrust-to-weight ratio. Uh, if you're as you're going straight up out of Kerbin, basically 1G worth of acceleration the uh, entire way through the atmosphere, and you know it tapers off after that, but it's, it's, it's wasted. So if you only have a rocket that's uh, with a thrust to weight ratio of 2, half of your fuel is wasted. If you have a takeoff thrust to weight ratio of 3, then only a third of your fuel is wasted, and so on. So you see, as, as you're thrust goes up, your efficiency goes up quite a bit as well. So I try to take advantage of that and keep the thrust over, you know, 3 to 1 the whole time, and that seemed to work out pretty well. The other thing, kind of the opposite end of that, is if you end up going too fast, you can suffer uh, issues with drag, and one of the best ways to combat drag is to reduce your top surface area by best way to do that is making your rocket taller. So I think I've made a little taller rocket than uh, the other guys have in this. And, um, you know, I think that's helped a little bit. Now the question has come up several times. How fast should you go on the way to the moon and how fast should you go on the way back? Well, you can think about this as a related rates problem and so the simple solution would be to go the same speed both directions but we realize that the cases are not the same each direction all the delta v you spend going to the moon you have to use again to slow down so effectively it costs twice as much when you're coming back from the moon you can take advantage of aero braking in the atmosphere on Kerbin and so that is much cheaper so if you do a little bit of algebra, I came out that I needed about a 3 to 4 ratio of speed, so that means we should uh, be going a little bit faster on the way back, and that should improve our time. So, my goal is to beat one hour, so that being the case, I want to land on the moon sometime just over the 30 minute mark, and I'll plan on being faster on the return trip. Now before I started this mission, I put a capsule on the pad and rotated Kerbin with the powers of time acceleration so that we would be pointing just slightly in front of the moon's path. This saved me a few things. It made it much easier to launch, so I did not have to time accelerate with the massive rocket because, well, physics did not like that very much. And now we just make some fine-tuning adjustments to make sure we remain on the collision course with the Mon. Okay, we're coming up on Miko 1 now. Somewhere around 6 kilometers per second should be good. I'm looking at the time, the, the periaps time at the moon, and that will give me my, my time in route. Now here's a trick for rotating a rocket. Uh, turn SAS off and hold a rotate key, fire the engines once, and physical time accelerate with alt period. Once the rocket's around to the direction you want, in this case retrograde, just hit regular time accelerate, and that'll cancel out the rotation. So here we go. Let's time accelerate up to the mine. And what I'm going to be looking at here is on Kerbal Engineer under the vessel, we have a suicide burn distance. And this that tells you the distance from where you are to where you should probably start your suicide burn. It's not that accurate most of the time. It, it varies based on staging and engine performance, but and also the terrain that you're landing on. But for the most part, it's a really good tool, and that's what I'm using here. I think it took about three tries to, to get it perfect. 
And to do multiple tries, if you don't know, you can do multiple quick saves. A regular quick save is F5. Uh, if you want to do more than one, again, hit Alt F5 to save one, and then Alt F9 to reload it. So, this is looking pretty good here. We have a really high deceleration. We're pushing 5 Gs. Um, in my opinion, these vector engines are some of the best engines in the game. They're four tons and put out an enormous amount of thrust. They work really well. Now, if you have staging that's a little bit difficult, as we just saw right there, a little rotation before you stage will definitely help get your boosters off of the rocket. So here's a trick to slow down efficiently on the MUN. Look at your suicide burn distance, and I started out once it uh, got down to about a kilometer. I uh, didn't want to let it get any higher than that, so I'd start throttling the engines down and also reducing that number slowly, trying to keep my speed up. Now, once you get down to the surface, you want to quick click out of the retrograde hold because as soon as you take off forwards, your rocket could flip upside down. To get a good trajectory back to Kerbin now, I just targeted another craft that was there. I think it might have been the capsule that I left out on the uh, pad to do the alignment. And we just burned straight towards the target. When you enter the atmosphere at Kerbin, you want to do so on the east side, as close to the equator as you can. And the reason for this is because, like Earth, it rotates towards the east. And if we land at the fastest rotating part, then we will have the lowest entry speed. And this will help a lot with heating. So in order to do that, go ahead and make sure you're in orbital view mode. That orients your screen to north up and then rotate uh, the craft to where the nav ball you have north up. And now your keys for up, down, left, and right correspond directly to your path towards Kerbin, up, down, left, and right. So it's very easy to adjust here. We're just fine tuning in and out a little bit. And we're gonna aim for around 20 kilometers high right on the equator and that'll give us the best possible chances of surviving this. Our last stage here is a nuclear stage with a lot of delta B. The main disadvantage is the low thrust and the fact that it takes a very long time to burn through, but I think it's worth it here in the final stage. As we're approaching engine cutoff, Jeb looks down at the speedometer, and uh, that's a little bit scary. We're approaching 10 kilometers per second. I think he might have had a little vision here into the future of a fiery hot death so he prays to the powers that be for safety and um, well just like that we're no longer 100% compliant with this contest but regardless of that and without time to fix it we proceed on and uh, it works out pretty good now in hindsight to fix this all I think I really needed is a few radiators I'm not entirely sure but uh, I think that might have fixed the issue. That was an oversight in the design process. But here we go, we're decelerating down and our time is looking really good. Now if you look at the time now, it's 13 minutes. The reason for that is in the building I changed the root part to a part lower in the staging and once I staged past that it restarted my timer. But the time was 40 minutes or 39 minutes and 30 seconds, something like that, right before we staged. So we just add that onto our time, and that's what we get. Now, by some magical luck here, I did get the chute deployed the correct height on my first try. And we are landed at about 56 minutes. So that is my contest entry. I hope it helps some people out. Just... If you like this and you want to see some other videos in KSP, let me know. Till then, I am Carl Groover and fly safe.